Hello everyone, <clears throat> this is Sloth from uh, Sloth and Moose again with another StarCraft 2 commentary. And today, guys, we're going to have a game between Mal's Morrow <clears throat> as the Blue Zerg in the bottom left. Um, he's going to be playing against one of the top, if not the best player in the world, OGS MC, the Korean Beastly. He's, he's just a great player. Morrow also <clears throat> very well. We've seen, seen him since the beta playing Zerg. Being very good. Uh, this map is Crossfire. Um, haven't played too much of it. I don't believe it's in the ladder. Yeah, I think it's just a GSL map. Um, but I'm not 100% on that. But we do see a pretty nice and safe natural for the Zerg player. But then again, if you want to take a third on this map, you either... Oh, heck, you've got not much uh, to choose from. I mean, this one you can take, but it's pretty far away. Um... The gold, it's also pretty unsafe. A bunch of crazy little paths you can go through. Um, but yeah, guys, OGS MC, Miles Morrow, gonna be a good one. So strap in and don't strap on because, you know, that'd be wrong. Looks like we're gonna have uh, early gas at, well, at 14, so not really early. He's just gonna want to get, <coughs> get Zergling speed up as quick as possible. I apologize for... Uh, my um, throat it is a little gurgly and talking for long periods of time believe it or not is not good for your throat but y'all probably already knew that because y'all are smart gonna have a standard walling gateway cyber core I'm sure for OGSMC uh, very standard player but his his mechanics are so amazing it's ridiculous. So, we'll see if we have a pretty good game right here. I'm not sure what it, this is from. It could just be a ladder game, uh, but then again, it could be from... I don't know if Miles Morrow is Code A or Code S, or if he's... He, he's. I'm pretty sure he's in the GSL. Uh, that's, that's just what I think, but this could be a GSL match, but don't ask me because I'm not an expert. Uh, very surprising, considering the map size, that he did not go hatch first. Uh, just because this map, it's pretty darn large, and this natural is pretty safe. Uh, I'd say you only have like this area right here to defend, and your ramp's pretty close in that area as well. So also Cybercore, we do have Ling Speed on the way, as well as a Queen, and just four Zerglings. Very, very, very standard for the Zerg player. And I would expect him to expand very soon, considering you can see his minerals are staying rather high and uh, there goes that drone for the expansion so just a really uh, it's it's kind of a it's a really uh, economical build of it's like next best thing to going 15 or 14 hatch so gonna have warp gate uh, is going to be chrono boosted out as well as the first stalker and the first century and we probably will see uh, this zealot in this first century kind of push out, just put a little bit of pressure. We see that a lot from Protoss players, especially higher level like this. Uh, double gas, that tells me he's probably just going to uh, put on a little bit of pressure with that stalker and that zealot, and then he's probably going to go into an expansion build um, simply because he's a good player. Uh, do have another gate, would expect one more. Yep, going to have three gates <coughs> to pump out the stalkers, and, or not the stalkers, the uh, sentries and the zealots. Because uh, if you didn't know, sentries don't cost anything in minerals, and that's why he has both these gases just going and hiding a twilight council. So we're actually probably going to see blink stalkers and not going to see the expansion uh, trying to go down for OGSMC. Uh, so as long as Morrow can hold this off, it is going to push him a little bit ahead in the economical game. He does not have a roach worn uh, and just been hardcore making the drones. Wait for that expo to get up. Uh, he is throwing down the Roach Warren now. <clears throat> throwing down a pylon at the bottom. Uh, this right here tells me, I mean, of course you can warp units all around here. But then again, it kind of fools your opponent into thinking you're wanting to expand. So, uh, at this point, Morrow might send some lings up in here. See this pylon? Oh, he actually might be expanding. But he is still getting blink. Maybe he just... He is going to expand. That, that I've never seen that build. That's kind of... I guess that's a Korean thing. Kind of a three gate stalker with blink into an expansion. And actually, I don't know if he's going to expand or not, guys. This really, oh, this was all just a full the Zerg player, and now he's going to push out with these units. Does not have a proxy pylon. 
so he's not going to do too much with this. And uh, these two spines, couple queens, and uh, he'll be able to produce roaches and links to easily hold this off. Is going to be war warping in some more stalkers, so said forget the expansion. So what I thought in the first place, but the reason I thought he was expanding is his minerals were sitting on about 400 right there when he was moving out. This blink is just now finishing and might do quite a bit of damage right here. Only going to have six roaches, two spawns, and a couple queens to deal with uh, this pretty scary force and bringing in even more stalkers. Does not have the proxy pylon. It's probably about to set it up. And here we go. Uh, not the best place for MC to engage. Just <clears throat> I would try and pull these these units away from these spine crawlers because these spine crawlers are going to do a lot of damage over this period of time and it does look like Morrow is going to be able to hold this off uh, only four or five stalkers left but here we go a few more so uh, seeing a pretty cheesy build from OGSMC but you know uh, this was all planned uh, considering the fact that he was just trying to fake out his opponent into thinking he was going to to expand and luckily Morrow was a beast and was able to get these units out and anticipated the attack instead of <clears throat> instead of the expansion doing a great job right now I can see stalkers Ling so good against stalkers pretty good blink micro uh, about as good as it gets actually doing a lot more damage with these stalkers than if they didn't have blink so not really losing hardly anything oh is he gonna he's not gonna get the next warp in so that is the main that's the main thing you want to do guys against a Protoss player uh, that is going a four gate build, which this isn't four gate, is it? Does he have a fourth gate? I didn't ever see it. No, just the three gates. But that's what you want to do. That's the main way to uh, be able to hold that off and be able to get your army big enough is to kill the proxy pylon. You did see that his roaches were right here attacking the pylon and getting attacked by the stalkers from the back, but he just said forget the stalkers in the back. He knew if he took out the pylon, there would be no more reinforcements. So MC does now look like he wants to expand, uh, get another pylon. Probably going to be seeing the expansion shortly. I just don't see him pushing back again with these stalkers. <clears throat> Not going to do enough damage. I do have Lair on the way, as well as a second gas, finally. <clears throat> one gas, uh, pretty, I mean, you don't really need much more than one gas uh, until about this point in the game. When you start getting your Lair, I wouldn't recommend, well, I don't. I, I don't know if I'm right, but I wouldn't recommend getting your second gas until your Lair starts. Just You're going to have enough gas. Uh, especially if you're just going Lings and Roaches, which are the only two units that Zerg can get out in Tier 1. Oh god, I'm so good. It's like 2 in the morning, I'm ready to go to bed. But I did want to do a commentary, just because I was, I was feeling it, you know? I was like, yeah, I'm tired, but then again, I want to do this. He is going to see these units uh, up here. This stalker. The reason he's got a stalker right here, in case you didn't know, but it's kind of obvious, but I'll point it out anyway. The reason he has a stalker right here, instead of like a zealot or probe, is because, oh, okay, well, if he starts getting attacked, blink, blink right over here, and he's completely safe. So, starting to split the map. The Zerg really needs to take a third. His minerals are at 500 right now. I would really like to see a third base. Uh, just simply because the Protoss is expanding. You know he's not going to move out anytime soon. And uh, really, what he's doing now is just macroing up. Not really transferring anything into anything except for, of course, tunneling claws. Because um, in the pros now, you, if you watch injury plays, unless you do like a Spanishiwa build, then you pretty much have to get roaches with burrow it's pretty necessary i don't at my level uh, around platinum and diamond uh, just because players aren't that good but uh, dealing with this many centuries as a zerg player requires burrow and that's the only semi counter to to force fields is burrowing under them and i honestly don't even like that don't even like having to do that <clears throat> but you know we do have Tunneling Claws on the way as well. Burrow is already done. I don't know why I said it as well. I'm so, I apologize. Eight more Roaches on the way. Missile Attacks level one. I would like to see him move out. Uh, he is just going to pull the Lings to the Zanaga Tower. You watch right here, like I was saying earlier. He can just blink back over there and uh, can blink back whenever he wants to. Um, does have a Zergling burrowed right there. Um, pretty interesting place for Burrow does have a Zergling just chilling at the third, making sure the Protoss isn't getting too greedy. An Observer out now, going to be scouting out to see if this third base is here. 
I hope. Uh, yeah, it is rallied to there. Now Ling's just kind of pulling around the map. We do have quite a bit of roaches right here. I have seen this before. Uh, saw it in a few Destiny builds, but this observer is going to spot these roaches, and he's going to say, oh, man, I tried. He tried. He did, guys. A lot of times that'll work, because Protoss normally don't really have enough units to deal with a Zerg army until they see that you're about to push out. Uh, but with bird ro bird roaches, if the Protoss does not have an observer, you can get all the way up under the Protoss army, unburrow, and take out the entire army. It is a very good way, especially if you're a low level, uh, gold, platinum, even in diamond. It's a really, really good strategy to try and use. But uh, of course, MC, not going to allow that to happen had the observer out, quickly spotted the roaches, knowing the timings of attacks like that. Uh, what do we have going on for the Zerg now? We do have Groove Spines, so he did throw up a Hydrogen as well as a Spire. The Spire, of course, for Corruptors, completely necessary. We'd like to see both gases going down on this third base. Um, how many observers does he have out? He does have two observers, so one hang out over his army, I assume. Yep, it's right there. And the other one just scouting around looking for whatever it can find. Uh, he does have one Colossus on the way, Thermal Lance. I'm sure both of those are probably getting... Where's the... Where's the facility or bay or whatever it's called? How is he producing those? Hold on. Hold on, I'm gonna... I'm missing a battle. I apologize. Hold on. I, I can't find his... Robo Bay. Oh, there it is. God, I'm blind as a bat, guys. I apologize does look like the Protoss is just going to be moving out for some map control, trying to uh, reduce the spread of this creep, and wants to take out the third base of the Zerg, and honestly, I think the Zerg has enough to deal with this, but well-placed force fields, as well as keeping that Immortal alive. Ooh, ooh, aw, oh, come on, come on, kill the Immortal, kill the Immortal. Nope, he is going to burrow under it. You see right there, if he had not had burrow, he would have lost all three of those roaches. Instead, only losing two. Not just a huge deal, but still, uh... It still helps. Like, every unit counts, guys. Now we are going to have a move in. I think we might have enough roaches to deal with this. Uh, are going to have to see some burrow action. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good at all. I didn't like that engagement. Didn't have much of a choice with the force fields. Is going to be able to pull away, though. Uh, keeping its life pretty high. Got hydras out now. We do not have any corruptors, I don't believe, which is probably going to mean this third base will get taken out. Force fields. Force. No force fields. Oh god, he must use up all his energy. Going to be able to easily take this out now because the Colossus was in terrible position. He probably is going to try and snipe this hatch. Actually, he's just going to try and run away. And very, very. Very big mistake not use, using the force fields with the Proto, for the for, Protoss player right there. Got to pick off all these stalkers. Oh, God, look at how low health. Great job with the blink right there to get them away. <laughs> look at this overlord just chilling up in the base saying, I'm pooping all over your face. And that rhymed, and it didn't even, I didn't even mean to. See how much of a poet I am. So, able to hold off for his third base. I believe MC got a little bit. Well, when I say a little bit, I mean he got completely overextended. And what can you do? What can you do? Is he going to move out or is he going to pull back and max out? We do. The thing is, we don't have any Corruptors built in with this mix, which means if you get a critical mass of Colossus, when I say critical mass, I'd say over four, maybe five, then this army right here is virtually useless without Corruptors. And we do have five Corruptors on the way. So, completely made me look like a scrub because he is good. He's Mount Tomorrow. Those Corruptors, he's going to wait for those to spawn before he engages. He will have to engage soon, of course. Oh, God, this is not the best angle. He does have two Corruptors here starting to eat up uh, some damage on the Colossus. And really, it's it's pretty one-sided, this battle. Uh, just oh, MC got so behind trying to push out uh, early and getting held off. But doing all right right here he really just this choke right here is what's keeping him in the game as long as he can hold this choke oh no force fields though three uh corruptors taking out these colossus and that will be the gg guys so very 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 standard game uh you see that a lot uh roach hydra corruptor versus stalker colossus uh sentry uh really it was pretty pretty over from the time that uh 
MC lost this battle right here just because he got really behind on the economy. Uh, if you're going to do a four gate pressure right there and you don't win the game, you have to do a lot of economic damage uh, to be able to to get ahead and win the game. Uh, just this two base was way too late considering that Morrow was at two base probably <laughs> three or four minutes before this um, Nexus was even going down. Took his third base, did a great job. Uh, was getting ma mined out in the main, uh, but not a big deal. He was maxed out whenever he did move out, which is pretty much what you want to do. If you ever get maxed out as a Zerg player, you want to move out, especially if you're playing against Terran and Protoss, because... I mean, Zerg versus Zerg, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can play defensive, and it doesn't matter because you have the same units. But yeah, guys, pretty good game. Very uh, very standard game. Very uh, Zerg versus Protoss, completely standard builds and stuff. But yeah, guys, I hope y'all enjoyed this cast, and I'll see you guys on the flip side of tomorrow. If I see y'all tomorrow, that's weird. Y'all are stalkers or something. Later, guys.